So we're going to jump right in. And Patrick, why don't you tell us all about what's been going on with Osiris Rex and the mission to go collect some stuff off an asteroid? Yeah, it is a curious name, Osiris Rex, but it's, it's an amazing mission to a near-Earth asteroid called Bennu. This spacecraft has the three phases of the mission, and, and that is, uh, one is to survey the asteroid, the second is collect a sample of the asteroid, and the third is to return that sample to Earth. So um, the collection is done by this uh, collection arm here. It's at the end of an 11-foot kind of an arm there, rubber arm. And uh, during the survey, there were four possible sites that uh, the sample could be collected from. So uh, one they decided was Nightingale, which is um, in the northern hemisphere of Bennu. And incidentally, Bennu is about the size of a skyscraper, so not a huge asteroid, but it is a small asteroid with a low surface gravity. This is how it was done. The uh, Osiris Rex slowly moved down to the surface of the asteroid. And then the sampling collector, uh, that cylindrical uh, piece of equipment there, uh, actually uh, collected the uh, material. Uh, jets of nitrogen were blasted from that, uh, from that uh, instrument. And then it only took about five to 10 seconds uh, for that collection to take place. And uh, Osiris Rex was on its way off the surface of uh, Bennu. Now that's the animation, and here is the actual footage, uh, several frames, uh, looking down, right down at the arm and the sampling collector. And you can see it, it was a very kind of a very brief touch and go movement, moment. And uh, roughly about 60 grams of uh, material was collected from this operation. And we recently got some pictures back from the site where the collection took place. This is what looked like before and there's a picture taken of it afterwards, and you can see there is a mark on the surface of Bennu uh, left by the sampling uh, collection. In this uh, next image, uh, showing the same site, there is a boulder that's uh, actually, a, yeah, a real boulder uh, about 1.2 meters across that was dislodged uh, from the uh, sample collection. Um, it's estimated that uh, that boulder weighs about a ton. Imagine that. Now, for the final phase of the mission, um, in fact, starting next Monday, OSIRIS-REx will fire its uh, rocket motors and uh, it will head back to Earth. But it won't be a straight uh, beeline back to Earth, a straight path. It will be a long two-year journey where it will basically circle the sun twice and then catch up to Earth. And when it does reach the vicinity of Earth, the sample uh, return capsule will be released and it will undergo its uh, entry um, descent and landing phase. And then it will land in the Utah desert on September 24, 2023, and where the uh, sample will be collected and uh, studied by NASA scientists and uh, labs around the world. So that's uh, uh, the conclusion of that mission. Uh, it's going to be a wonderful thing and uh, it's heading back to Earth um, as of next Monday. So that's, that's really great. Well, super interesting, Patrick, um, to be getting that back. I'm going to be excited to see what that sample is like because it's just jam packed full of Bennu. Um, we're going to have it delivered to our doorstep and be able to see what that rubble pile is actually made of, what it looks like. Even just the, the pictures to really show that some asteroids are big rubble piles was crazy, although we expected the, part, the pieces to be a little smaller. They had trouble finding good collection sites, I know. So anyway, a huge success and it's on its way back. And now what's up with this? This looks like the Parker Solar Probe you're showing here. Uh, yes, indeed. So uh, as uh, Parker Solar Probe is designed to uh, study the uh, sun's uh, atmosphere, which is called the corona, which means it has to fly very close to the sun and uh, see what the environment is like as, as close as eventually it will fly as close as 4 million miles from the sun and traveling at the fastest speed any spacecraft has traveled, roughly about 430,000 miles per hour, which is an incredible speed. Now, the Parker Solar Probe has an orbit. It's, uh, it, takes it, it takes it close to the sun, where it studies the sun's outer atmosphere, and then the orbit that takes it just beyond the orbit of Venus, and that roughly is about a three-month orbit. 
So on its way out, um, it's doing uh, other things. And uh, one thing it did was uh, something it did last year, which was uh, take a picture of the sky surrounding the sun. And on August 25th of uh, 2019, it did that. Here's a simulation. Um, it took a picture of the, uh, Venus, Mercury, and uh, excluding the sun because it doesn't do that because it'll burn out the sensors on a spacecraft, but also of the Earth. And uh, when it did that, it actually found a curious thing, a band of light stretching from Venus, kind of centered near Venus, and stretching across the sky and going through the sun and off to the left, bottom left, uh, which is out of this picture, uh, to where the Earth is. Now, the picture it, it took uh, actually looks like this through its wide field camera and near field camera. And what you see there is uh, with the labels there, you see Mercury, uh, Venus, and this thing called a dust ring, uh, which is kind of centered around uh, Venus and it runs straight through and the sun is not visible. But on the other side, on the left there, uh, with its dotted line, which indicates the, the band of, of uh, what is called uh, dust, um, you see the Earth. So, and so what we're looking at here is the orbital dust ring of Venus, but we're seeing it edge on instead of um, kind of overhead. And this is the first time and the first picture taken of a such a dust ring in Venus's orbit. It's a 360 degree view image. And we've known the dust ring is there, but we've never had a complete picture of, uh, of the true extent of uh, that dust ring. So this is a very remarkable picture. And from that, we can uh, kind of uh, uh, construct uh, what that dust ring uh, might look like um, around uh, the planet Venus. Now, there is a great um, scientific debate as, the or as to the origin of these dust rings around the planets. And um, some scientists think it's from asteroids, some, some of them think it's from uh, comet uh, dust. And just recently, uh, we, in fact, we did a story last month uh, that Juno made some measurements and, uh, and showed that uh, there was a lot of dust uh, from the planet Mars, and maybe that's the origin of uh, a lot of dust that we see in the inner solar system. So it's an ongoing study, and uh, we'll, uh, the scientists will keep on studying, and we'll find out uh, uh, what is the real cause of these uh, of the dusty um, rings around the planet's orbits.